Welcome back guys. It was a busy summer. We had some pretty horrible conditions. Uh, you know with the forest fires and stuff like that going on and um, yet it actually worked out to our advantage. First of all I'd like to say a huge thank you to Warren Scope Mounts for their support and to US Optics for their assistance in getting all the information together and uh, helping us choose a scope. The evaluation is not sponsored by US Optics. This is an unsolicited review. This is my scope. Uh, conditions of testing, uh, let's talk about that for a second. As I'm sure most of you know, we had a state of disaster declared in the Northwest, uh, particularly BC due to forest fires. Smoke, haze, mirage were all extremely prevalent this summer, right up until now. Error particulate numbers were off the chart, and it made for stellar testing. As my buddy says, if you want to get good, shoot in the sh We certainly did, as you'll see from the video at the end. I'll let you decide for yourself if you think it was bad. Two shots, consecutive, 1170 in those conditions with this scope. Over the summer, students showed up with all levels of scopes, and this gave me a, a chance to really compare side by side rather than relying on, on memory. Uh, some of the worst glass we saw was from some very noticeable names, and uh, some was surprisingly good for the money. Uh, several oddball European scopes even made their debut, and honestly, I'd never touch them again given the choice. They were horrible. Uh, we had American and European scopes from $1,000 US to scopes nearing, uh, actually, I uh, thought it was five, but it was actually 7,000, uh, to old school duplex reticle scopes, and they were in front of me all summer on students' guns. This gave me a really fresh perspective of side-by-side -side time with different optics to compare when evaluating the US Optics B25 with Tremor 3 reticle. Like I mentioned earlier, American, German, and even some offshore brands were all represented this summer. Uh, the US Optics scope went from Tika to Remington 308 to Custom 6.5 and back again over three months. It was used by students, myself, my other instructor. It was even used on a successful Idaho elk hunt on my custom Jim Weiss rifle, which you see here. The standout thing about the scope is that nothing stands out. It's a very sleek scope, very sleek design. Uh, there's no quick throw levers, there's no tall turrets, there's also no scope caps. Just bare bones functionality. Uh, however, it's a fully capable scope, uh, fully capable piece of kit, and it's features list more than most scopes out there. Starting on the back, you've got the fast focus adjustable eyepiece. There's no knurling on it. You set it, forget it. You've got your magnification adjustment here, and you've got these deep uh, grooves, which make uh, switching that in inclement weather just uh, just totally easy. Real positive knurling on here. Moving forward, you've got your uh, turrets. Really nice adjustment. Not too loud, but very positive. And that makes manipulating the scope easy, in, even in inclement cold weather. The windage has a lock, so you have to actually pull it out to set it. Most of the time you're gonna leave it in if you've got the Tremor 3 reticle. I like the elasticized scope caps better than anything. But back to the scope, uh, the scope has a 50 mil objective, but it has the field of view of bigger objective lenses out there because it is not internally masked. You can look that up if you want. That means that you're gonna get some slight shadow and uh, that's done with the purpose of maximizing the field of view. I was warned about this uh, when I bought the scope, um, that there might be some parallax at the extreme edges, but I've really found it not to be any worse. The glass is Japanese, there's no discernible tint, detail stood out crisply, Mirage was extremely observ observable as, and manageable as you'll see. As for setup, US Optics recommends a 30 MOA rail system mounting system, uh, 30 MOA combined. We pushed the scope past manufacturer recommended to travel to see, travel to see what their concerns were regarding the parallax on the extreme edge of the glass. It was not noticeable and we were shooting bug hole groups with the rifle uh, at 100 meters. That was with all of them. And then it was very positive all the way out to past three quarters of a mile. Uh, it's obvious why elite groups use US optics. The scope is ultra rugged. It's purpose built with zero bling. Its intended user is the elite level shooter. The dialing is spot on. Adjustments are smooth and positive, And it leaves one with a sense of confidence that, you know, is lacking in other scopes. Uh, like I mentioned, the Japanese glass is ultra clear. It is very white. 
it is distortion free and I did not find any funky color shifts or anything going on. I ran the scope in some of the ugliest Mirage I've seen in years of shooting uh, with difficult lighting to boot. Uh, here I'm shooting a 66% IPSC target at 1177 yards and I could not get the camera to focus. Uh, however, I was still able to make two center chest shots in a row and then make an attempt on the red dot at 1177 yards. Uh, this is not my only illuminated Tremor 3, but it is definitely the best one. I was really surprised when I first looked at the B25 illuminated reticle. The full Tremor 3 reticle is visible even in pitch black with or without night vision. Uh, it does have illuminated night vision. That's your first few clicks when you go in. Uh, and it's perfect for the hog hunter or the operator. I also think it's worth mentioning that I'm running the US Optics fold-out levels on three of my rifles. These are my go-to. I mount these levels fairly far up the scope rail, making it easier for my eyes to go from the target back to the, uh, to the level. I'm also getting older and getting a little bit more far-sighted. Uh, zeroing the scope is dead easy, uh, dead simple, and a tool is included which makes the process even easier. Scope turrets are never rem removed, meaning less likelihood you're going to get debris inside or moisture. Uh, I suggest that when you purchase a scope, you throw the included tool into your fix-it sticks kit so that it's handy when needed. That about wraps up my impressions of the B25. I think that... Um, you know, the results speak for themselves. If you want to know more about them, I'm linking an informational video to, at the bottom. And you can go to US Optics website and find out all the, all the details, you know, all the numbers and all that kind of stuff that you want to know.